What's up YouTube? I wanted to shoot a quick video on my fermentation chamber. This is actually fermentation chamber uh, version two. I got into this originally because I wanted to start making lagers. And in order to make lagers, obviously you have to be able to ferment at cooler temperatures than I could do in my house. Let me show you what I did here and how easy this actually is to build. It all starts with this. All this is, is a mini fridge. Just buy yourself a mini fridge, din, dent, scratch, and as long as it runs, it's fine. You use it as a fermentation chamber so it ain't gotta look pretty. You can probably get one of these off of uh, like OfferUp or some local trading thing or maybe at a yard sale for next to nothing. The reason this is pulled out right now is because I had to expand it because I wanted to be able to put both fermenters in there at the same time. Originally when I bought this, it just barely fit one in the mini fridge. I actually had to make some modifications and cut out some of the foam. I had that SS Brewtech. Okay, that was the first fermenter that I had that I would run in these. And uh, then I got that Amble one for a lot cheaper. I think I did a review on that. But I want to be able to put both of these in here at once so I can ferment two batches at once. Or especially if I'm in a lager where it's got to sit in here for a long period of time, I don't want this thing tied up where I can't make any beer with one thing lager. The expansion was just adding a wood collar, essentially. If you flip it that way, it's the same as doing a Keezer bar, but just using uh, two by fours, correction, two by sixes and two by 10 to give me the distance offset that I needed in order to be able to fit two fermenters in here. I use this to lock the door because this is uh, magnetic off a regular fridge, so it's not gonna stick to wood. You wanna get a mini fridge that cools itself with basically the freezer section that comes out. You're gonna take the, the freezer section across here, you're gonna unscrew it from the sides, and then real, real gently, you're gonna bend the whole thing down flat. What that does is it gets it out of the way and it allows you to use the space in here. But that connection right up at the top there, be very careful because when you're bending this down, if that kinks, cracks, or you know you get a hole in it, fridge is dead. That is just an inexpensive CPU fan that I use to circulate the air in here. Right down there, I just got myself a little clip lamp. That's how I provide heat. The nice thing about this system is it can regulate the temperature of both warm and cold. If it's cooler in my garage than it is outside, I can still bring the temperature up. This is all controlled by a controller. Inside here, all I did was ran the wires here. I ran the, the power cable out the side there um, for the CPU fan. I ran the power for the light right out here by the door. And you know, that because that's because that goes to the controller. The, the fan itself, you just plug straight into the wall because it's always on just to circulate the air in here to keep it you know, nice and even. That heat, heating lamp will kick on based on the temperature in the controller. Same thing with the cooling unit. I coated all this with just a high gloss just to keep it sealed. I wanted something sealed here because you know it's beer, bubble overs, all that kind of stuff. It, with wood, it's gonna absorb the smell and it's gonna end up funky. The only thing you have to do to expand this is you just pop the hinge off the regular fridge, put whatever space, make you know a box spacer to give you the extra depth that you need for your particular setup, and then screw these back on. And like I said, I just I put a little foam seal here to make it easier to line this up, and put the little latch on there to latch the side. Close that bad boy up. Provides a little bit of pressure for the seal. I just did a rough paint job on this just so it doesn't stick out as bare wood. This is the connection for the fan that will always be on. And this is the connection, this is the only thing you have to plug in for the controller because both the heating and the cooling element plug into the controller itself. I got the unit back in place where it normally stays in my garage. It's plugged in, everything's running. The circulation fan is in there running constantly and the controller's kicked on. So this temperature controller is the brains of the operation. You've got the actual temperature that it's reading with the probe inside up here. Down here, you've got the temperature set point. It'll let you know what it's doing. Um, it'll Right now, it's in the cooling mode because it's above temperature, so it's going to cool down to the set point of 70. Then it will turn off the refrigeration unit. If it needs to bring the temperature up, it'll kick over to the heating side. It's really easy. Just runs these two plugs. Anytime the temperature's low, it kicks on the heating side. When the temperature gets high, it kicks on the cooling side and you just heard it click off there and the light went out. And then the, to set the temperature, you just press and hold the set. And then that's the temperature you want it set at. Up or down, you just click up or down. So if you're doing a, a step fermentation, it's really easy to adjust your temperature day by day. You could also 
set your heat differential. This is how far off the set point it needs to be before it's gonna kick on the heat and the cold differential, same thing. It'll set the differential on the cold side. And then what it'll do is when the temperature drops down here, it's gonna kick on the heat side. Um, if it gets too warm, it's gonna kick on the cool side, which is the refrigeration panel on the back. Something to keep in mind here is that I've noticed with this unit and with my particular setup is it'll start to yo-yo. Let's say you have the differentials for both these set to one degree. You set your temperature to 70 degrees, so if it drops down below 69, it's gonna kick on the heat. If it goes up above 71, it's gonna kick on the cool. The problem with that is it's always gonna be yo-yoing. When the temperature drops down, it's gonna kick on that heat lamp. It's gonna run that heat lamp until it hits the set temperature at 70 degrees. At 70 degrees, it's gonna cut off the heat lamp, but that element is still hot. So it's gonna to continue to raise the temperature past 70 degrees. And then once it hits 71 degrees, it's gonna kick on the cooling side. The cooling side's gonna do the same thing. Once the temperature drops down to 70, it's gonna turn off the cooling side. Problem is that panel's still cold, so it's gonna keep dropping the temperature. You're gonna end up with this yo-yo where it's constantly gonna either be running heat or running cooling to, to try and balance that out. So what I found the best solution to that to keep a tight temperature range is if you know the room that this is gonna be in. Right now this is in my garage, it's winter time. So most of the time this is gonna be running heat during this time of year in order to bring the temperature up. I set the close temperature to the heating side and the further away temperature to the cooling side so that it will kick on whenever this thing hits two degrees below the set point, but it won't kick on the cooling side until it reaches three or four degrees above the actual temperature. That prevents it from constantly heating and then cooling and then heating and then cooling. This thing's pretty easy to make. Uh, get yourself a used mini fridge to do it. Showed you the wiring, it's fairly simple and it doesn't have to look that pretty because most, most of us have our fermentation chamber just sitting off someplace to the side in storage because if you're gonna lager, this thing might be running for a couple of months and without you checking it. 